coming from Beijing, the mainland China. Uh, this is the first time I attend to the Wikimania. Of course, it is very near to where I live compared to some formal, uh, former, yeah, you know, former Wikimania. Uh -huh. And uh, I work for Chinese Wikipedia as an editor for about five years. Now. China has a, a big population, but only a few contributes to this greatest project, I think. I think it's a pity. So um, there's uh, still a long way to go. I am from Syria and I live in Saudi Arabia. My age is uh, 17 years right now and I am coming to Kimania to share my experiences and knowledge with the others and to know more people of the movement of Wikimedia around the world. I think uh, these two days I'll just focus, try to learn about how you, uh, in, how you deploy education program, how do you pitch, pitch uh, to uh, professors and teachers uh, in schools about the, the benefits of Wikipedia, the benefits of Wikimedia projects. And I want to bring this experience and the practical uh, practices <laughs> to, to Taiwan. Imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. Um, we're the people who are doing that, and um, every year we keep cranking along and, and working and working. And I think Wikimania is a great time to stop and reflect on uh, the successes that we've had so far. Um, and so I wanted to go through uh, quickly just some of our milestones this year. Um, when you've been at it as long as we all have uh, now, over 12 years, um, it's easy to get a bit uh, jaded about certain milestones, uh, but to me they're still very, very exciting. Uh, when we look at the big numbers, uh, 28 million articles, uh, 286 editions, uh, well that's a nice big number, but it's almost too big to contemplate, and certainly none of us is working in a project uh, where the number 28 million has direct relevance to us, it's not something that we try to achieve. Uh, but what's interesting to me is the, the breakdown of languages uh, that have different, you know, major milestones. So we now have 120 languages uh, with at least 1,000 articles. And obviously, uh, those, uh, you know, those last 20 languages are all just barely over 1,000 articles. And what I would encourage people to do is to go out there and find those, uh, find those wikis. Uh, go to the list of Wikipedias uh, and go see who's working there and, and meet them. Uh, come out of your home wiki where you're used to, to working and maybe uh, at a moment when you're discouraged about some uh, you know, of our usual uh, idiotic arguments that we all accidentally find ourselves in as Wikipedians, uh, go do something completely different. Go pick a language that you know very little about, um, hopefully uh, a language, a, a regional language in your area where they may speak your language, um, and go and try and find one, someone there who speaks your language. English is al always a a likely choice, but depending on the part of the world, it might be French, it might be Russian, it might be something else entirely. Um, and just go and chat with them and ask them how they're doing and ask them how you can help them and say, I'm sorry I don't speak your language at all, um, but I would love to spread the word and help you in whatever way I can. Um, and it's an incredibly rewarding thing to do, to go and meet those people who are just at the beginning uh, of that journey. Last August, I flew to Frankfurt on Main, Germany for my first encounter with Wikimania. Here at a local youth hostel, hundreds of people from dozens of countries gathered for a week's worth of conferences, conversation and conviviality, all united by one goal, creating a free online encyclopedia in every language on earth. Wikipedia.org, the website where this encyclopedia can be found, now ranks among the most visited and valuable in the world. It was created at virtually no cost by volunteers, these self-styled Wikipedians, using an innovative computer program called a wiki, which enables anyone to write and edit on a web page. Oh, okay. Yeah. So otherwise, you would have seen it a lot more often. Okay. But just that one line. Hackathon is mainly where people who are developers or coders, kind of thing, who, who works on the software side of Wikimedia, they come and they join. They sometimes they work on their own concepts, their own ideas, 
or sometimes they work with guy like me who doesn't know much of the technical side but then who needs assistance so i know what i need to be done but i don't know how it's to be done so the people would be here who can assist me or help me technically my name is Linus Valukas. I'm a developer from Vilnius, Lithuania. Open source software is uh, when you develop something and you want it to share with the world and you want the rest of the world to, to use it and to, to improve it. If you are lucky, uh, you release it under an open source license and, uh, and from then someone takes it to use it for their own projects, for their own needs and uh, he or she likely imp improves the software and gets it back to you. So you can then both use the same software. My name is Benny Lin. I'm from Solo, Indonesia. One of my purpose here is to help with Japanese Wikipedia to use their own script, which is a Japanese script. The script is not available to be used as a, in a web page anywhere. And MediaWiki is the first open source project that would enable people to type Japanese script as it, it was written uh, hundreds of years ago. I'm a medical student uh, and I'm interested in stuff that's related to promoting women into Wikipedia because there have been so few women editing Wikipedia in my country and as well as globally. So I'm talking with people who are interested in the same issues and trying to collaborate with them and trying I'm trying to learn from them. Um, you know, people from different parts of the world have different ideas. There are certain things which work in their culture, which we can really assimilate into our culture. Uh, yeah. You, you quite just, a lot of we had a very uh, valuable conversation with uh, people from uh, South America, from Bolivia and Venezuela and uh, Brazil. They have some good uh, achievements in their Wikipedia. And in Arabic Wikipedia, we have uh, we have a lack of awareness. Like people, they don't know how valuable their contributions are. It's very easy, and people, we, we are in a in a level people they don't know till now that you can edit Wikipedia. My name is Tom Hogarth. I come from Perth in Western Australia. This is my first Wikimania that I've attended and the conference hasn't even started yet I feel as I've got more than I could possibly have hoped for. Why is that? Uh, the networking, the meeting people from other countries and putting a face to the other editors and realising how human they are compared to some of them, compared to how they are online. A lot of people uh, who are older, who have computer skills, probably don't understand that it would be very easy for them to um, edit and help and assist. In some cases, some people have a, a sense of their, their proofreading or their, their wanting to check facts. Is, is something that perhaps a, a younger editor may not be so patient with. There are some maintenance project issues which is, can be time consuming but it's very satisfying when you, when you get to a point you've just finished working out a category or you've finished working out an article and getting it up and, and it's accepted by others and they actually look at it and they appreciate it. You, you get a sense of self-satisfaction that you've contributed to a really larger project I'm Vera de Kok, I'm from the Netherlands. I've been a developer with the Wikilabs Monuments project in the Netherlands and I'm also an administrator at Commons. Wikilabs Monuments is a photo competition that started in the Netherlands about five years ago. It started out as a national contact test uh, around our national monuments. Uh, the next year following that it was uh, uh, a number of European countries. Since then it has been an international contest involving countries around the world and this year China actually will be participating for the first time. This is the usual explanation for what is free software or free knowledge or open content. 
I didn't understand a about it. I'm German, I asked an American who speaks German and I said, Chuck, can you explain me what does this mean? And he said, Sicko, uh, just forget it. In the English language you have a problem. The word free, many people think free that means you don't have to pay money for it. Yes, and in German you don't have the problem. In German people would think anything of free, but you, you just you don't use it in German. It's not necessary. And it's just confusing because you talk pe to people about don't think of free beer. Well, what will people do when you say that? When you're in, Germ when you're in Germany and you, sell to, uh, you talk to people about free beer, what will be the consequence? You will make them bark like a dog. Where, 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 <laughs> where, where? where? Yes, it's just distracting. It doesn't help you to explain. Free speech. What is free speech? It's Benjamin Franklin. It is a printing press, newspapers. It's a speaker's corner in London Hyde Park. But no one will understand what you mean in this context. It is folklore. It's an insider joke just for Wikipedians and other crazy people. No one will ever have something of this. I use this. A suitable picture, uh, I, I got it via Facebook, uh, all audiences, I use it for el the elderly, for young people uh, and everyone between them. You may have heard of this, maybe some of you know the, any one of you, oh you're a Facebook friend of mine and, and you too. Mm -hmm. So this is an ape, I forgot the species, but this ape is anywhere in a jungle in Asia. And there was a famous photographer who uh, well had a lunch break. And then the ape came, and he saw this camera, and it's interesting, and uh, he played with it. And finally, the ape made this picture by himself. And then I asked my audience, well, I am showing you this picture. Am I allowed to do so? Is this legal? Do I have the rights? And uh, people will say anything. They will say uh, the rights. Well, the ape made the photo took the picture, so he has the rights. You must ask the ape, <laughs> yes? Or the photographer, yes, the owner of the camera. No, it's the owner of the jungle or the piece of land where the ape lives, or the government. They have the rights. And the only correct answer is no one has the rights because copyright is for humans and apes cannot, they have not the creativity you need by law to be to be a copyright holder. So this is public domain. You can use it. Something I hadn't expected before I started working on Wikipedia is how much ideology is involved in making it really open source and accessible to everybody. If you're copying something, you have to make sure that it's clearly uh, uh, classified as being in the Creative, creative Commons area. If there's any sign of any form of copyright by anybody, you just don't touch it unless you had a special permission. Especially when you're working on illustrating uh, the Wikipedia articles, it's very tempting to skip the free part and just include pic pictures that have been published elsewhere on the internet and take a less less absolute stand on copyright law, but taking that absolute stand makes it, a, makes it possible to d redistribute the entire work we've been doing to people that don't have access to uh, the internet. So Wikipedia can be provided offline on computer, on a stick, or on, uh, on DVD, um, like it was done in, in Kenya or on a new stick like uh, Afripedia and Kiwix are doing currently in Western Africa. So uh, there is an increased access of Wikipedia. But the question is, uh, uh, is Wikipedia, how is Wikipedia used and how could it be used uh, in better ways? Um, one of the answers comes from uh, one of the projects that have been implemented in Kenya and uh, 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 students that receive access to Wikipedia offline were extremely happy about it. But what they noticed is that uh, unfortunately Wikipedia didn't provide what they needed for their curricula.
we are a big team, a delegation from Kazakhstan. We came for, from 11 cities in Kazakhstan. Uh, so uh, we came uh, here for one common goal, uh, to develop uh, Wikipedia. Uh, in our schools we have uh, little Wikipedia clubs. Uh, so there was uh, our first meeting uh, in Kazakh Wikipedia. Uh, and since this meeting uh, we, are, we help uh, to, get, uh, to make uh, Kazakh Wikipedia better and bigger. I would like to underline the importance of Wikipedia in our educational process because many of international teachers who are teaching our students um, educate us uh, with the help of Wikipedia and they also suggest us to use uh, sites such as Wikipedia or Wikimedia in order to increase our uh, knowledge. So the Wikimedia movement has been giving out grants for a number of years now. Um, probably the first grant givers out were uh, the Wikimedia Foundation, maybe the German chapter, possibly also the French chapter. Last year, we took a massive uh, leap forward in our ability to give out grants and in the amount of money that we gave out as a movement together. And it looks like this. So last year, the Wikimedia Foundation gave out just over five and a half million US dollars to about 35 organizations around the world and to many, many hundreds of individual volunteers. So what you see on the right here is a chart of how that breaks down. So it's Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Switzerland and the Netherlands, India, Argentina, and 27 other countries. The Global North um, gets the sort of lion's share of the dollars that we give out. About 95 cents of every dollar goes to the Global North, and about 5 cents of every dollar goes to the Global South. What we did in 2012-13 was we established the Funds Dissemination Committee, which is a volunteer-led group of people who make recommendations to the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees for where the money should go. This past year, I would say that what we focused on mainly was the infrastructure of grant making. We were doing a lot more grant making, a much bigger scale than we had ever done before. And so we had to focus on process and systems and structures and you know, just how the mechanics of the work were done. Visual editor. So the purpose of the visual editor is to allow people to edit without their having to learn wiki syntax. The visual editor should enable more readers to become editors. But I actually don't want people to think of the visual editor purely as something for new people. It is designed for new people, and the reason we're building it is because new people are um, too deterred by wiki syntax. But my hope, and I think the hope of the people building it, is that in the fullness of time, it's going to be so efficient and so effective and so user-friendly friendly for lots of different kinds of tasks that most editors will use it for most purposes. It's not there now, but that's what we're hoping will happen. Nah. Nah. What's making you say nah here? I have no clue how to do that. Okay. Toolbox, red right? eye. Template. Oh, look at all that. I don't want to know about it. No, I can't do it. I cannot add a section if I have no idea how to add a section. Okay, overall, how'd you feel about doing all this stuff? Um, kind of stupid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to call it title, author, work, date. Access date, reference, reference. It's formatted so that the computer can read it, I guess, uh -huh. or whoever reads it, whatever. I don't know that much about it. Sure, sure. This interface is even more confusing than now. <laughs>
<laughs> but, like, this looks pretty scary to me. Well, like, there's, like, all this, I don't know, it just looks, like, hard to read. <laughs> well, like, look at it, you have no idea what this is. So that's why we're building the visual editor, right? We're building the visual editor because we purport to contain and we want to contain the sum total of all human knowledge. And if there are huge swaths of the population who click edit and just back away slowly frightened, um, we're not gonna achieve our goals, right? So we need to make it easier for new people to edit Wikipedia. Mobile matters because mobile is the future. Right? Most of us uh, went on the internet for the first time 10 or maybe even 20 years ago, and we did it from desktops and we did it from laptops. And that was sort of the, the, the frame for our experience. That was how we understood the internet. The mobile experience is a new and additional experience for us. But we know that all around the world, um, in India and many other countries, people are coming online for the first time using their mobile devices, and they may never experience the internet in any way other than through a mobile device. And so mobile matters. It matters that people be able to read the projects on their mobile devices, and it matters that they be able to edit the projects on their mobile devices. We used to have a saying around um, Wikimedia, which I think probably people still say sometimes, which was, you know, Wikipedia is not, does not want to be written by people in rich countries for people in poor countries, right? We want everybody to continue, to contribute. We want everybody to share the knowledge that they've got. Earlier this year, a very surprising thing happened. We did not expect this. We did not plant the seed for this. We did not know this was going to happen. Um, and when we heard at the Wikimedia Foundation about the story, we sent Victor out to document it for us, to kind of find out what was going on and, um, and, and tell us the story. So I'm going to ask Chip backstage now to um, play us that short video. Hi. This is a letter which me and my classmates, my classmate wrote to access Wikipedia for free. It goes as follows. Open letter to Salsi, MTN, Vodacom, and ATA. We are learners in grade 12 at Sininjong High School, Joslovo Park, Milnatin, Cape Town. We recently heard that in some other African countries like Kenya and Uganda, cell phone providers are offering they are customers free access to Wikipedia. We think this is a wonderful idea and would really like to encourage you also to make the same offer here in South Africa. Our school does not have a library. 90% of us have cell phones, but it is expensive for us to buy airtime. So if we could get free access to Wikipedia, it would make a huge difference to us. Normally, when we do research, Wikipedia is one of the best sites and there is information on just about every topic. Think of the boost that it will give us as students and to the whole education system of South Africa. Our education system needs help and having access to Wikipedia would make a very positive difference. Thank you. 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 And goes. Thank you. Thank you. interested in registering for next year's hackathon or you have an idea go to next year's wikimania site and there's a, a link up here 
you should be able to figure it out. It's it's not Wikimedia or Wikimania 2013. It's Wikimania 2014. Wikimedia org slash wiki slash hackathon. Right up there, you can sign up as a participant, or you can click on the brainstorming link and add your ideas. There's also now a brainstorming page for the main conference. Um, so if you have an idea for next year's Wikimania, we highly encourage you to go to this URL. It's just wiki slash brainstorming um, and add your idea there. So again, the hackathon page for next year is up. If you've got some ideas, please submit them. This room is going to be open over the uh, rest of Wikimania. If you'd like to come back here and lounge, please clean up your belongings. We'll be closing the room at 530. You are all wonderful human beings. We appreciate you being here. Thank you.